The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers and Nodulator XL. the Saskatchewan Crop Diagnostic Schools and joined by Faye, Doc, and Bouchard. Now a lot of people are saying they're seeing yellowing in peas and other pulses. What could this be due to? Well, probably mainly the environmental conditions is what would cause yellowing in our pulse crops, especially peas this year. Uh, so that would be probably number one would be um, the excess moisture that we've had in a lot of areas. So basically um, drowning out the roots, causing those wet feet and just the, the roots aren't able to function properly. And this results in the plant not getting what it needs up to the, the upper parts and causing the yellowing to happen. Um, as well, cold conditions can cause yellowing or even cloudy conditions. That they're just not getting enough sun, enough photosynthesis happening and causing um, the yellowing and so we're not getting the, the green that we would see if we're having a, a good functioning crop. Um, there could be other things that would stress out the crop and cause the yellowing. So maybe um, fertility issues or herbicide injury. So anything like that um, that causes stress can also result in yellowing of plants because they're just not, they're not functioning at the right capacity. Um, if we've ruled out those other stresses, then we can kind of move into the area of plant disease and look at the root rots that might cause some issues in the field. So you have some symptomology right beside you? Yeah, so we, what we have here, um, well actually I'll start with the, the relatively healthy plant here. So um, this was grown in the greenhouse and um, doesn't have the, the nodules forming. So this isn't exactly what we'd normally see in the field. Um, but we're just showing uh, here that we've got some good root development. Um, the plants were watered with a normal amount of water so they weren't being drowned out. And they were in sterile soil, so no disease pressure. Um, I also do have a plant from the field just showing um, that with less disease pressure, of course, we'll see um, nodules in the field. And if you were, um, if those were functioning properly, then you could cut them open and see um, the nice pink or red color um, within the nodules as well. So good root development overall in the absence of um, that stress from the environment or from the disease itself. Um, when we get that water stress, um, this plant actually was grown in sterile soil, so there was no disease pressure, but there was too much water. So as I said before, um, just not allowing the roots or the, the plant to function properly when there's so much moisture and we get the wet feet. And so that alone we can see can cause a lot of damage. But if you get that in combination um, with a disease, so there'd be a number of different root rot pathogens like Fusarium, Pythium, Rhizoctonia, those are really common and those will come in and kind of take advantage of the fact that the plant is stressed out and cause disease. Um, what we, we also have been seeing in the last couple of years is Aphanomyces root rot. And so the sample that I have here was um, actually grown, it wasn't even in excess moisture in the, the pot that it was grown in, but it was um, grown with uh, the Aphanomyces present. And so when we compare it to the plant that I showed um, first, we can just see uh, mainly the biggest thing would be the, the color. So when you get a phanomyces, you kind of get um, a browning or caramel color on the roots. Um, these roots are kind of um, just starting to rot away as well and getting some lesions on them. So we can imagine um, that if you had that disease pressure in combination with the really wet conditions that you get an even worse looking plant. Um, we've got some samples here too of plants that were out in the field um, kind of with a number of different disease pressures. So they were in um, with the wet feet and then they've got um, the root rot and um, some ascochyta blight or microsphyrella blight starting to form as well. So it's kind of a combination of, of different things that can all happen at the same time. Um, and just to mention again about the aphanomyces, it's part of the complex of those other root rot pathogens, but in terms of early disease pressure early in the season, seed treatments are effective in managing Fusarium, Rhizoctonia, and Pythium. Uh, but aphanomyces is a little bit of a different story because there are no seed treatments that are effective against it. Um, so really, if, if it turns out that aphanomyces is the, the issue in your field, it um, can only be managed by rotating away from the crops that are susceptible like peas and lentils, um, even alfalfa is susceptible. Chickpeas are not susceptible to aphanomyces and certain varieties of faba bean are also uh, resistant. So um, hopefully in the future we'll get uh, more resistant varieties in those other crops and be able to manage this disease. Um, when we're talking about like, Saskatchewan and Manitoba have had a lot of flooding, 
Uh, so is it largely because of oxygen deficiency that the roots are being stressed and hurt so bad? Yeah, I would say that that is the, the major issue. Like again, when we look at the plant that was just under moisture stress, it's the roots aren't able to develop properly. Um, it's really going to be hard for that plant to um, pull through until the conditions dry up and it starts to get some, some warmth and some sunshine. And, and the crops will often be able to pull through and improve. Um, but in those situations where there's a lot of moisture or there's been consecutive years of excess moisture um, and then in combination with that when we get um, the added stress of the plants getting um, the root rots then the plants are going to be um, not able to pull through as easily and as well over those consecutive years we've had more moisture and more root rots the pathogen levels will be building up in the soil and so it'll be even possible in a really high disease pressure situation that even when conditions kind of return to normal the pathogen pressure could be high enough that you'd still get some um, issues with the root rots. Is there anything we can do to help along our crops that have had flooding this year? Is there any sort of nutrients that maybe we should consider applying? Or? Um, I would say for this year it's just uh, improvement in the weather conditions is really um, the only thing that will help and so it's for us it's just a wait and see what happens and just plan for next year. There isn't really anything that we can do and in terms of the root rots there's no treatment within the season so a foliar fungicide isn't going to help the roots because fungicides don't have uh, movement down into the roots they're only going to protect the the foliar parts that are being sprayed um, so for next year could think about a seed treatment if the issue is fusarium rhizoctonia or pythium uh, if the issue is a phanomyces or just a combination of all those pathogens i would say um, helping you know the rotation or just basic good agronomy getting the crops off to a good start and just hoping for better weather <laughs> hey dog and bouchard thank you so much Thank you.